it's on. Can you tell me what prompted this series of work? Um, in general, my work has been about um, cultures moving through places and being uh, unrooted. Um, and so this uh, body of work stemmed from the study of porcelain in the 1700s, in the late 1700s, where it was actually such a strong commodity for um, powerful rulers. And I um, made this work in response to try to unpack all of that, of those ideas about power and sort of defang it, in, if you will. And so this piece um, behind me is um, from Meissen, which was, um, I think, the first uh, factory of porcelain, uh, and it was in Germany um, in the late 1700s, and they were um, vying to get the, uh, the secret of porcelain um, from China. And so I'm really interested in this idea of, um, of images that cross boundaries, like the study of some of these um, floral patterns, um, specifically in Meissen, where um, the, the floral patterns are very um, unsentimental. They're, they're kind of harsh and severe, and so I like this idea of how something might become uh, a global style through some kind of homogenization and also where it might also exist in the landscape from which it was from. Um, maybe the other thing to say is that in a lot of these porce original porcelain um, uh, vases and and um, wares. Um, there was a reserve which was the central image that was often about the local landscape and then there was an external part which was a much more global style and I was interested in a lot of cases of um, contrasting the global and the local together. Um, and then I think that just by working on burlap and materials like embroidery and so on. I was, again, really trying to unpack it and make it very much um, mine and tactile and handmade and sort of put piece together and put together so that there's maybe an overlay of a new narrative, like the narrative of debunking painting at the same time somehow with, with this idea of um, the tradition of porcelain at that time. Or just an idea of craft versus fine art, but also women's work because porcelain, traditional porcelain, was not done by women. But by men. No, that's true, and and I think too, you know, it was interesting because a lot of this, these central pieces, the reserve, were prints that were then also reinterpreted. So I like this idea of a kind of um, almost like the game of telephone, like this. Um, this lineage of um, distortion that can happen, and then by throwing a material that's not the appropriate material in the way, it makes that even distort further. Like trying to um, translate a three-dimensional um, piece into a two-dimensional painting language, or then complicating that further by having it be the hand sewn, um, you know, in my, I mean, this is actually something I just recently thought of, which is that my grandmother was actually like a sewer, and all these things that I have, um, you know, and she immigrated here. Um, so there's also some connection, I think, between myself feeling a little bit um, outside and the connection through the thread of her. And then you um, have incorporated your sort of signature CM type oh, yeah. works. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so um, for me, the cyanotype is a one-to-one -one ratio because it's, it's a photograph. And so you basically, you know, coat the fabric and you put it on a surface and where the, um, you know, in this case, uh, it's coated on the fabric and where the fabric touches the um, ornament, um, which was ironwork um, in this case, where the fabric touches the ornament um, and the light passes through, that area remains white where it doesn't pass through. So 
for me, that was also something interesting is like making the connection between something in the present tense, like real, like a blueprint in, in actual scale with something that's depicted that, um, like in this case, this piece um, came from a collection at the Met. Um, and, you know, also the idea that someone actually collected this thing and then it went down the lineage that way is also sort of interesting. So, yeah. But this idea of bringing photography into this, you know, um, 17th century practice is really right. interesting in terms of thinking about it as a contemporary object. And the fact that you're moving it just one step further to this place from, you know, right. the, its collection to the Getty to the Met or whatever the institution is, like sort of back down to the tangible space where it can be consumed again, it's really interesting to me. Absolutely. And also, like, this type of photography is an early form because it's also cameraless, right? So it's just emulsion on a surface that then gets exposed, so it's quite simple, you know. Um, and the other thing, actually, that's maybe interesting about this is um, that these pieces were exposed when I was in a residency um, in the south of France, so they are what actually led me to the whole study of the porcelain thing to begin with, was that particular residency, because there was a sort of weird lineage that the person who um, in the um, early 1900s who started this foundation, his grandfather had a porcelain factory in England and so they had this collection of these plates um, in the chateau and I had gone there to study the landscape, not this Porcelain, but then by seeing these pieces there and this idea of the inside and the outside of the plate, I thought that that was um, like a much better study because it became the mediated landscape, not the actual um, landscape. So, yes, yeah, so this is actually what triggered it. And then um, maybe I should also say that I think of them all as drawings. So. There's, like, even though they're suspended or they're painting or they have, um, or they have embroidery, there's, um, the whole project is really like a, an expanded drawing project that is drawing because it's more like a frame of mind of research investigation, so. Perfect. are there any other questions? Girls? <laughs> no speechless. <laughs> Beautiful. That's good. Yeah, thank you.